I welcome you all for this lecture series on 4G and 5G communication networks. In this lecture number 37, we will discuss on the flow-based QoS framework in 5G networks and uh, which delivers the seamless user experience meeting cutting, cutting edge technology. As uh, 5G enables unprecedented connectivity and data rates, ensuring quality of service QoS becomes crucial. The flow-based QoS framework revolutionizes 5G networking by dynamically allocating resources and prioritizing traffic based on specific service requirements. By categorizing data flow into distinct QoS flows, this framework guarantees predictable performance, reduced latency, and enhanced user satisfaction. Today, we will delve into the architecture, benefits, and implementation challenges of flow-based QoS in 5G, exploring how this innovative approach optimizes network efficiency, supports diverse use cases, and redefines the future of wireless communication. First, we'll see the overview of the flow control, that is the flow-based QoS framework. Now, the goal of this flow-based QoS framework is it ensures the quality of service for data flows in 5G networks. The primary goal no, of the flow-based QoS framework in 5G is to ensure that data traffic is treated appropriately based on its quality of service requirements, ensuring a consistent and reliable network experience for different applications and services. And the key elements are QFI, QoS flow identifier. One more time, I'll tell you. QFI means QoS flow identifier. A unique identifier assigned to each QoS flow to manage and differentiate traffic in the network. It helps supply specific treatment to different flows. There are two types of QoS flows, GBR and non-GBR. GBR means guaranteed bitrate. These QoS flows require requires a guaranteed bitrate ensuring a certain level of bandwidth is reserved for these flows. Next, non-GBR. These QoS flows do not require guaranteed bitrates and are more flexible in terms of bandwidth and allocation. Next, uh, if you are, this diagram shows the illustrate the mapping process between QoS flows and data radio barriers. DRB means data radio barriers in 5G networks. QoS flows represent specific service requirements, example, video streaming and online gaming, while DRBs are logical channels that carry user data over the radio interface. This figure shows QoS flow IDs, uh, that is uh, IDs are calling it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. These are all the unique identifier for each QoS flow. And here we have uplink and uh, downlink. This we'll de discuss in detail. And the QoS characteristics, uh, you know, priority and latency, service requirements for each QoS flow. And the TRB IDs, 1, 2, 3, etc. It unique identifier for each TRB. Now, TRB mapping, uh, what it says means a QRB, QoS flows are mapped into TRBs based on their QoS characteristics. Next to radio resource control, RRC. Radio resource control manages uh, uh, a TRB configuration and QS uh, flow mapping. So the mapping process ensures that each QS flow receives the required radio resources and prioritization, guaranteeing predictable performance and the quality of service QS. By dynamically allocating TRBs to QoS flows, 5G network optimizes resource utilization, reduces latency, and enhances user experience. And the key aspects are it uses 1 is to 1 or 1 is to n QoS flow to TRB mapping and dynamic mapping based on QoS characteristics. And RRC manages mapping and TRB configuration. Next, QFI in GTP. U encapsulation. So QFI in N3 tunnel 
first one is QFI in N3, QS flow interface in N3 tunnel. The QFI is carried within the GTPU encapsulation header, specifically in the N3 and N9 interfaces between the UPF and NG RAN. This method allows for the management of QS flows without needing to modify the N2N packet header and no changes to the N2N packet header. Huh? And uh, since the QFI is encapsulation in the Q GTPU header, it does not require any modification to the original packet headers, which ensures that the original flow of data remains unchanged between sources and destination. Next, traffic forwarding. Data packets marked with the same QFI receives the same traffic treatment in the network, which includes how the network schedules them and applies admission control. This ensures consistency in how packets with the same QFI are handled. Next, packet classification in downlink. And first one is the process in UPF. In the downlink DL, when data packets arrive at the user plane function, they are first classified according to packet detection rules, PDR, which are predefined by the session management function SMF. The PDR uses filters such as the five duple or IP of IP addresses and ports to identify and classify packets. PDRs use filters, example, IP uh, five duples to classify traffic. The PDRs match data packets against specific filters, that is IP address, source or destination ports, or protocol to determine the type of traffic and how it should be handled in terms of QS. And QS enforcement rules, QER. After a packet is classified, it is associated with the one or more QS enforcement rules, QER. These rules specify how to manage and enforce QS for the packet, such as applying a specific bitrate, prioritizing the traffic or other QS parameters. The QER also defines the QFI that will be assigned to the packet for the consistent QS treatment throughout the network. Next, packet forwarding in the downlink. Previously, we have seen packet classification in downlink. Now, we will see packet forwarding in downlink. Packet flow in NG RAN. Once the packet is uh, first, packet flow in the NG RAN. Once the packet is classified and associated with the QFI, it is forwarded through the NG RAN, next generation radio access network. All you know that next generation radio access network. The NG RAN uses the information from QFI to handle the traffic according to its QS requirement. And the data packets are sent over the NGU tunnel to the UE. Next is TAP layer. TAP means Service Data Adaptation Protocol. It's responsible for multiplexing multiple QS flow over a single dedicated radio barrels, TRB, if required. If the network decides to combine uh, multiple QS flows, TAP adds an additional header to each packet to indicate which QS flow is belongs to. This ensures that the network can apply appropriate QS policies to each flow. Next, your reflective QS use. In case where reflective QS is implemented, the STAP header is required to reflect the QS implementation back to the network to allow proper handling of the flow. This mechanism allows the network to dynamically adjust the QS treatment based on the current traffic conditions. Next, QF, uh, QS flow to TRB mapping in NG RAN. QS flows and TRBs. Uh, QS flows and TRBs. Then NG RAN maps each QS flow identified by its QFI to dedicated radio bearers. This allows the network to guarantee the required QS for each flow either by allocating dedicated bearer or by multiplexing multiple flows over a single bearer. Example, QFI5, dedicated to TRB, for example, uh, a QS flow with the QFI5 may be assigned to a dedicated TRB to ensure that it is 
and that it required bitrate is guaranteed. And example, QF I two two three multiplex on the same DRB. On the other hand, flows with the QF two QF I two and the QF I three might be multiplex onto the same DRB if the network determines that these flows can share the same barrel without degrading QoS. Next is tap header. When stap is used, it adds a header to the data packet, introducing some additional overhead. This tab header carries the necessary information to map the QS flow to the appropriate TRB. The overhead is acceptable as it ensures that the network can apply the correct QS treatment to the flow. Next, Packet forwarding in uplink, UL. UE packet generation, first one is UE packet generation. In the uplink, that uplink we are calling it as UL. The user equipment guarantee generates the data packet uh, typically from an appropriate layer. These packets are compared with the packet filter sets, uh, packet filter sets installed on the UE to determine how the packet should be handled. Next, packet filter sets. The packet filter sets in UE contains predefined rules that allow the network to classify traffic based on the application or flow type. These filters are checked in the precedence order and when a match is found, the packet is assigned QFI. QFI to TRB matching, mapping. Once a QFI is assigned, the packet is forwarded to the access totem AS where the stab layer maps the QFI to an appropriate TRB. If no specific TRB is found, the packet is sent over the default TRB. The stab header is included in the packet to indicate the QFI, which helps the network determine the correct treatment of the flow. Next, UPF processing and bitrate policing, UPF role. When the data uh, packets reach the user plane function UPF, the UPF is responsible for processing these packets and enforcing QS policies that have been set by the session management function SMF. This involves resolving the packets into corresponding IP flows and applying the relevant QS rules. Next, bit, uh, bitrate policing, what it says means the UPF ensures that traffic com conforms to the defined bitrate limits. For GBR flows, it enforces the guaranteed bitrate, ensuring that no flow exceeds or falls below the defined limit. For non-GBR flows, the UPF may apply other policies such as traffic shaping or throttling to maintain network performance. Other QS management. In addition to bitrate policing, the UPF also handles the other network functions like traffic counting, monitoring, and applying other rules as specified by the SMF. This ensures that all network traffic adheres to the established QS requirements. Packet forwarding. After applying the QS rules and any necessary traffic enforcement, the UPF forwards the data packets to their next destination, whether that to be toward the UE or further into the network. The network continues to treat the packet based on the QS policies applied during the classification and mapping process. So that's all for the UPF processing and the bitrate policy. Coming into the conclusion, the flow-based QS framework in 5G enables precise and dynamic resource allocation and ensuring superior service quality for diverse applications. It supports critical use cases by meeting stringent requirements for latency, throughput and reliability. With its granular flow level control, the framework enhances both user experience and network efficiency. Additionally, the integration of AI and adoptive policies ensures scalability and the flexibility in managing complex 5G environments. This innovative approach is pivotal in unlocking the full potential of next generation mobile networks. Thank you. Your time and interest in the flow-based QoS framework in 5G are greatly valued. This framework is a cornerstone of next generation networks 
enabling efficient resource management and superior connectivity. Its adoptability supports diverse use cases, ensuring reliable low latency and experiences. Together, you can advance the future of communication technology. Thank you once again.